Happy Wednesday, everybody. I was having a little bit of fits and starts getting getting going here, but I think now we got the we got the Facebook working. So, um, everyone, I am here Wednesday. It is November 11th in the garden, and this is something that we really want to be doing for all our planted community members. <laughs> Um, and it's something that's really kind of um, a special thing for being in the community is we want to customize this as much as we can for you and make sure we're answering your questions and we're getting you to success and harvest as fast as possible. And we're giving you the recipes and the fun things to do to really help live this healthy lifestyle. And I think, again, like I always say, planting food, creating, growing food is really the epitome of a lot of this, which I just love. And I have had such a joy doing this. And so... Um, can't wait to bring you guys into this as well. So what I thought I'd do right now is I went into our, um, and I, I love it by the way, everybody's so active in the Facebook community. And what I did is I went through, um, you know, we're always in there, um, you know, on a daily basis, different members of the team, making sure we're answering your questions and things like that. But don't be shy guys, ask your questions, um, help others out, post, oh my God, post, 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 post what things are looking like for you. Um, if you've got a wall, post your wall. That is so inspiring for people to see. If you're getting started on the planted box and the containers, post your growth, what you're doing, but the good, the bad, the ugly, because you know what? These are living things and life happens. And so that's okay. That's kind of uh, what we're learning here and we're moving through it. If you would know the disasters I've had, you would, you would laugh. And I'm sure I'll share them as we go along. But the first thing I wanna talk about is growth. So. Here's what happens when you first grow new seedlings, is there is a lot of work going on in the soil underneath, and you don't know that. So when you get a seedling, it's, it's a very young, you know, that's why we call them baby seedlings. They're very young. And so they need to get the roots when they first go, they go through a little bit of kind of transplant shock. And, and the soil that we give you has a fertilizer mix in there that actually helps with root growth, accelerating the root growth and such. So to help with that transplant shock. And that's a very common thing in any garden. And um, and so really that first week, we're, first week or two, the activity's happening underneath. Um, probably by the end of week two, you're gonna start seeing some new growth come out of the middle of the, the branch where the leaves branch. And that's good. Some of you may have um, faster growth sooner and it really depends on where you live. Um, if you live in a place where it's getting a lot of sun, maybe if you live kind of um, someplace like Florida, let's say, um, you've got warmer temperatures and you've got more sun, you have longer days than people that live up in Northern California and Washington and such. And so our days are shorter, it's getting colder, and so we're gonna get slower growth. But the seedlings that you got are cool season seedlings. So these can handle the extremes um, in, in terms of kind of night temperatures, day temperatures. Um, and I do wanna talk about winter and what that means because what is so great about our community here is we do have people kind of all over. We have people in Boston and Florida and Colorado. So we have people in different areas. And so I will talk, talk to that and I will also talk to like what you can be expecting. But the first thing that I wanna do is I said, you know, the growth, know that growth is slower and, and that happens um, in the beginning. And then about kind of week three, you will start seeing growth on the outside. But what you wanna be doing early on like this is you wanna be checking the new growth when it starts coming out because that is the more, most susceptible to um, pests. They like that because it's nice and fleshy. And so one thing I wanted to show, um, I'm gonna flip my camera here. So yesterday morning, here I was in the garden. This, this is one of the, the planted wall. And I was, here's a kill. It's been growing for a while. And you see this new growth. Um, I'm gonna try to zero in on here. And I'm very excited because I got rid of it. But yesterday, there was some gray, little gray, it almost looks like gray dust. Those are aphids. Um, right now, it's gone. You don't see it. I'm so excited. It's gone. I got rid of it. But what I did is I, I took, uh, there were two leaves, brand new leaves that were just covered. And so I got rid of those. And then I just, really wiped off the aphids that were there. And that's important. You can see I actually eradicated it. I'm very excited, but I'm gonna keep this close watch. I'm going to be looking for this. Now, what's interesting, um, you know, a lot of planted box, you guys aren't growing kale yet, you will be. And I have noticed that plant in particular, aphids like it because there's a lot of places for them to hide. See all these different nooks and crannies? A lot of places for them to hide. So you, you always just kind of want to flip things over and be looking closely. A lot of times from afar, you can't tell. But um, they like new growth. Um, arugula, 
happy to say you guys got arugulas and you have very baby arugula right now. Your, your arugula are the kind of seedling leaves, really. Um, there, it's really, you know, hasn't, it's probably is not starting to grow yet for you because it's so early. And um, arugula, I will say, I mean, knock on wood, I have not found a lot of issues with pests um, going after the arugula. So you are happy there. I will say leaf miner is the one that does seem to happen. And I'm looking right now for an example of leaf miner because leaf miner likes to get into chard too. But right now things are looking happy and healthy and I'm not seeing an example. But don't you worry. As the weeks go on, we will see it and I will show it to you. But um, I did want to show you because I saw some people asking questions. If you do see aphids or you see um, caterpillars, things like that, again, you want to be doing your stick habits, having your coffee, and you want to be going out there in the morning, which is what I do, and literally just a few minutes just checking to make sure everything looks good. If you do see some stuff, you want to you know, take that leaf off that has the damage so it doesn't spread, or you want to just kind of wipe off the um, the aphids or such. But if you kind of see, you see a problem that's not going away, then um, we, we can recommend some different um, organic pesticides. So, and everything is organic, so that means it's safe to eat, okay? And it's safe for like the um, the the healthy predators, I should say, things like bees and things like that. But safer, they call it insect killing soap or insecticidal soap. Um, this is a very, this is organic. You can see the Omri um, label there. This is a very safe one. This is a good one for aphids. And it's a, you could get this at any nursery, um, you know, kind of Home Depot, um, Amazon. You can, this is pretty much available anywhere. And um, it is, it gets aphids. Um, it's good for that. Captain Jack's dead bug. This is really good for caterpillars. Um, and remember caterpillars, we talked about those are like, if you see little white moths flying around, they look like white butterflies, but they're moths. Those ones, um, you know, a lot of times they are laying eggs and, you know, a few days later, usually like three to four days later, you might see little tiny caterpillars eating your leaves. And, um, I always recommend the first thing you want to do is just get rid of that leaf or, um, you know, wipe it away and see if that eradicates it. If it's really becoming a problem, then you spray. Um, it's, this is organic. that uses an organic bacterium that kind of suffocates the eggs, believe it or not, is how it works. So um, it's very safe to, to um, you know, you wash your leaves off and eat after. It's completely fine. But those are the two things I would recommend. And here on this, you can see there is a picture. This is what leaf miner looks like. And I wanted to show that. So do you see these little white... This is what appears on leaves. And arugula will tend to get it in Swiss chard. So you guys have arugula, so be on the lookout for that, okay? And it's usually kind of on the underside of the leaf and such, and they appear as eggs first, very small. So again, if you're going in there and you're looking and you're checking, you should be on top of that, not a problem. Um, I wanted to show you some things about growth. Um, oh, I'm live right now. Um, so this, this is a sage plant, and this is actually in a, a planted wall pot, but I wanted to show you about growth because this sage plant was, was planted at the end of September, and here we are in kind of early November. So this is about a month and a half, a little bit over a month of growth. So, um, so that's something, we, we sent you guys sage plants that were pretty mature. I don't say mature, but there was a lot of leaves in there. We did that on purpose because we wanted to make sure that you had some sage leaves for when we do some of our cooking classes that are coming up. Um, so that's exciting. We're going to be doing some oil and vinegars using um, kind of herb-infused oils and vinegars for your holiday cooking. So that's exciting. Um, here's oregano. This is oregano that was also planted about the same time as that sage. And you can see here, it's very happy and healthy. Now look here, I've got a couple like little burnt edges of the leaves. And this typically is a sign of overwatering. Um, you know, sage and sage and oregano, herbs in general like to dry out before you water them again. So if I fill the soil right here, it's pretty damp. So I, I need to let off on the dry, on the watering of this, uh, of this plant. And this is usually a little sign telling me, hey, I'm, you're watering me too much. So that's that. Um, but your lettuces, um, these were planted in kind of, you know, earlier fall. They're happy. I don't know if you guys remember during the launch Good God, these were babies, and these things are just happy, happy. Look at these colors. Um, it's really cool. I can't wait for you guys next, uh, like, early spring when we bring lettuces out again. Um, 
you're going to see magnificent colors because when it's cool, the the um, lettuce is kind of when they get a little stressed with the cold. That's when they bring out their colors. It's so pretty. But um, they, why am I telling you this? Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Um, I was talking about something else. But yeah, no. Oh, I was talking about watering. So you want um, you want to keep that soil damp with lettuces. You really don't want that soil to get dry. You don't want it to stress it out. And lettuces get stressed out and leafy greens. Um, that's when they tend to bolt. Now, it's too early to really talk to you guys about bolting, um, the planted box people, because um, you are dealing with little baby seedlings right now. So you're not even worrying about that. But the planted wall people, you guys are probably dealing with some of that because some of you guys have been doing this for a while. So if I walk over here and I show you, um, I do have a plant that is bolting. So this is a romaine that is bolting. See, it's growing up. Start Now romaines will do that. Like see this guy, you know, he's got a little loop here. That's okay. I probably should have planted it a little deeper into the soil so that wouldn't have happened. But now when it starts to really go like this and really growing up, at that point, you know, you want to eat the lettuce and see, but it's probably getting pretty bitter is what's happening there. Um, so the other thing that I want to talk about before I sign off here is winter. Um, because we're entering into winter and cool season and we've got people kind of all over the country right now. And so it's, um, and I want to make sure I talk to everybody. And I'm very excited to let you know that there are um, some, we're putting together some documents, some training guides for you guys, and I'll probably be doing some videos as well. But we've, we're putting together some downloadable um, PDFs for you, um, specifically about, about winter and kind of what do you do when you're in different winter climates when it gets really cold. So um, what is kind of some of the different tools, equipment, accessories you can use to continue growing um, even in the winter? Always you want to make sure you're going with more cool season. You want to kind of grow with the seasons. That's very important um, because these, um, you know, in general, it's going to be colder out in winter, even if, you know, and so you want to make sure that you've got plants that can acclimate to that. But let's, let's talk real quick about the different winter stages. Um, mild winters, I'll call, well, Arizona, Southern California, Florida, those are mild winters, obviously. I grew up in Arizona, I know that. But it still gets pretty darn cold at night. Like, you know, it's a desert, so you've got those extremes. And so, if you've got daytimes where it's, you know, 50s, 60s, that's fine. That's fine. You can pretty much grow anything. But at nighttime, when it's dropping into those thir low 30s, you're going to want to put a sheet. And like, I know we've got some people in, from, in, you know, from Nevada here. And um, you're going to want to put a sheet. So here's an example. Like, um, let me go flip again. <laughs> um, so here's just a bed sheet, literally like an old bed sheet. And I literally just drape it over my wall at nighttime. Um, you know, when it starts, when the temperature starts dropping, I just drape it over the wall. If you've got a planted wall, um, for the containers, what I did, um, is because we have been having nighttime temperatures in the low thirties all week over here in Southern, in Northern California. So what I did is if you notice, this is a little arbor and it's protected. It's got some grapevines growing. So I basically took all my grow pots and I put them together and they're kind of creating this old little micro environment and they're keeping warm. Um, they're, it's keeping them warmer. So I actually did not put a sheet all week over these and, you know, it literally was dropped down to, I think it got as cold as 31 one night. And so everybody's happy and they, I don't see any signs of frost burn or anything like that. So, um, so that was good, but I have another wall over here. Apologize for walking around. Um, and this wall is kind of a lot of stuff's off of it right now because we're changing out for harvest season, taking peppers out and basil and things. But you can see here, like I have my drop cloth and I put that on the wall um, because of the, it was the cold nights. And um, you can get, you could use a sheet or if you want to go and if you're, if you live somewhere where it's consistently in the 30s at night, but it gets okay during the day, you should go to your nursery and get a, they have, and you can buy these online, you, they're just drop cloths. Um, you know, they're kind of frost protection cloths and you can buy those and you just put those over at night. So if you're in an environment where it's okay during the day, 50s during the day, but it gets cold at night, go ahead and, you know, keep them outside, keep them, you know, kind of potentially in a protected area, but cover them at night if, if it's in the low 30s, continually high 20s. And, um, and the reason why I say keep them outside if you can is because you have the fresh air. It's just healthier for the plants. And direct sunlight. You want to give them as much direct sunlight as possible. Now, if you live in Boston or, you know, you've got some Flagstaff and you're covered in snow already. Um, and I got, I think even in Texas, I think there was just a snowstorm. Uh, we had a customer tell us. I can't remember exactly where they were. But um, for you guys, 
there are some, so like extreme winter, we're gonna to wanna to bring grow lights in. You're gonna to wanna to bring in your pots and we're gonna have some grow lights and you're gonna grow indoors. And we're gonna have a PDF document we're gonna to send to you to show, tell you exactly the type of grow light spectrum you want. Because um, having, I've had a lot of experience with kind of ornamental indoor walls, um, growing, you know, indoor living walls and, you know, not all grow lights are created equal. So you gotta make sure you're, you're getting the right kind of grow light. So we'll give you guidance on that. And so expect that um, later in the week, early next week. And then, um, and the other thing is, is if you're in a temperature where, you know, sometimes it snows, but not really, you know, it's, you can be outside, you can get a portable greenhouse. I mean, they literally sell them on, on Amazon for like $40 and you can get a little portable greenhouse that keeps them outside. So you're getting that direct sunlight, um, going, you know, going through the greenhouse, but it's protected at night. It, it, it makes a big difference in the temperature. So if you're consistently in the twenties, um, you know, even like during the day, you're in the 30s. You you could potentially, and you're just not. You you could probably do a greenhouse, and if you've got really cold nights, you could even bring in a little heater, so a little portable heater. Um, so so those are things to do. But do know that we are giving you guys that guidance um, because it is possible to do it. Um, and it, the biggest thing is you just have shorter days of sunlight shorter hours and so your growth is slower and that is absolutely why we gave you guys um, herbs and we gave you cool season bok choy um, you know arugula actually does pretty well you know can handle some of that some of those extremes um, lettuce just start getting kind of fragile with that so that's that's exactly why we're giving you what you need when you need it in the different times of the year so that was it. I think I've kind of gone longer than I wanted to. Um, I think what's what's coming up, we'll, I, I, I want to go ahead and jump on every probably week or two. We're sending you guys emails every week um, that with tips and recipes and things like that. Always ask your questions in the Facebook community. We're always there answering, and it really helps me to know what questions you guys have. And um, we'll be shipping out the next box for December, in early December in time before the holidays, so that's exciting. And my last thing to tell you is we have a cooking class um, scheduled, I believe it's next Thursday. Um, I wanna, I will, we will confirm that in the um, email and in the Facebook postings and such, so you'll see that. But we've got a cooking class coming up, which is gonna be using some of the stuff that you are growing, which is exciting. So, and we're, you know, we talked with um, Robin, who is our, our gourmet chef that we're working with. And, you know, we told her, hey, let's focus on some of those plants like the oregano and the sage, where you actually can take a couple leaves off right now. The arugula and the bok choy, those are still growing in. So you're, you're not gonna be wanting to harvest those yet. So as we go through the weeks, I'll talk to you about harvesting and when you do that and what, you know, and how to, things to look out for. But for right now, the biggest thing you need to worry about is making sure that those bok choys and arugulas for the planted box guys, for you guys, make sure that you're, you know, you're watering those consistently. You don't have to water as much now that it's getting cooler. I mean, so that's, you know, that's good. The, you're doing that, but you're also just checking, making sure that the nasty little aphids and people are staying away. <laughs> um, as it starts getting cool and it starts getting a little damp, the air starts getting more damp, you wanna be on the lookout for powdery mildew. And I'll talk about that next time. I'm not seeing signs of that really in the test garden. So, um, and that's why I love doing test gardens because they're kind of an indicator of what's what's going on. But that's just kind of like a, a milky, um, almost kind of mildew on, on the leaf. That's how you know if you have powdery mildew. Um, arugula is not as except, susceptible to, to powdery mildew. Um, leaf miner, I've seen leaf miner most, like, most often on arugula. So we talked about that earlier in the video. So you want to be on the lookout for that, okay? Thanks guys. And um, if you're just now joining, absolutely make sure to watch the whole video because I, I covered a lot of things. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Excited and um, we will see you guys as we grow together. Bye-bye.